Hey everybody, so this is my roommate Don. Don and I have been roommates down here in the basement for a little bit over two years now, and we're just gonna ask him some questions so you guys can get to know him. So Don, how old are you? 75. All right, and how many kids do you have, and how many grandkids do you have? Oh boy, I've got um, three boys and three girls, uh, 14 grandchildren, uh, six of them are boys, eight of them are girls. And then I've got a bunch of other grandchildren that I have adopted in my heart. Don has traveled all over the world and he's lived in many countries. Uh, Don, how many countries have you lived in and which one was your favorite? I've been to 94 and um, uh, Saudi Arabia was the last country that I was in and Dubai and um, I have built my autobiography around those countries that I have lived in long term have lived long term on five continents and six of the world's islands. Um, speak a little bit of those languages. I always have to brush up on them if I'm going to go back there. Um, but undoubtedly the one that I guess I could say this, in my opinion, Rio de Janeiro or Rio de Janeiro is the most beautiful city in all the world. Second most beautiful, in my opinion, I would pick Hong Kong. And third most beautiful, San Francisco in uh, California. And then probably Denver and some others. But as far as countries is concerned, there will be no country like my own that I love the most. But I'm very sad about my country because Liberty's experiment is rapidly coming to an end. Uh, Charlotte Iserbite's book, The Dumbing Down of America, tells the sad story. We are no longer educating our children to know or to understand the things that made our republic great and which is necessary to continue to keep it great. Donald Trump's going to help, but he's not the final solution. And so I would have to say that India is my adopted home and I love it very much. I have family there. My two youngest sons, uh, Donald and Carrie, or Buster and Carrie, the bear and the bus. And uh, their families, their friends, I love them all so much. And so India, yeah, that's my adopted home. I hope to die there but not real soon. Would, would you say right now that you're retired? Oh yeah. And what are some of the jobs that you've had in the past? Uh, my very first job as a boy was uh, uh, one that I created myself. I did, uh, uh, well, I should say we did wood and leather crafts. Uh, my parents uh, wouldn't let us have a TV, which we hated at the time, but it turned out to be a, a real blessing because we both learned wood. My brother was basically into wood and I did leather and we would sell those items to our local, we had a uh, variety shop, can't remember that man's name, an old man, he took my brother and I in and, and uh, would buy our things and, and resell them and he kept uh, buying them. So we made belts and wallets and Jerry would make a pot holder, uh, um, out of wood. It looked like a little coffee pot with hooks on it that you could hang your pot holders on. And we made all kinds of things. So we were self-employed, I guess you would say, from the very beginning. <clears throat> and then uh, I worked for J.C. Penney's. Uh, just, uh, just into before college, selling um, men and women's shoes. And also I worked for uh, Sears, selling men's and women's shoes for a while. And then I went to university in Southern California, Azusa, and um, worked for J.C. Penney's over there to help my way through school. But basically, I've been a writer and salesman all my life. Okay. What life advice would you give to young people today? Well, that would be real easy. I would have to go to 
the book of Ecclesiastes and just uh, basically quote the whole 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes because when it's all said and done the only thing that matters is our relationship to God and everything is going to be exposed we will not hide anything we will all stand before God and give an account for all those things that we've done in our flesh um, so remember your creator in the days of your youth Don has published several books uh, Don can you tell us about some of the books that you wrote I've written several of them but my um, main opus was a book called Tax Free, How the Super Rich Do It. And it, uh, it sold very, very well. Um, it sold on uh, all but one of the continents. And basically it was a common law expose as to how the super rich have used the law to escape taxation. There are four ways to get out of paying taxes. The first of those ways is to evade them and they'll throw you in jail for that one. Second way is to um, use some loopholes which are always questionable. You may end up having to go to court to give an explanation for what you did. And so I don't recommend either evading taxes or using loopholes. Uh, I do recommend uh, tax engineering or tax planning but it's expensive. You have to hire a tax lawyer or a CPA and they will teach you all the different things that you need to do to organize yourself uh, for the least tax impact. But the best way is the way that my book talked about which is exemption and how a person can absolutely be exempt from paying taxes. Now of course this was very complex and I would spend two days teaching my clients how to do that. But the easiest way to describe it is, because most people can't imagine you're being exempt from taxes, if you were earning a million dollars every minute through um, municipal bonds, not one penny of that income is taxable. Why? It's exempt. They just say it's exempt. So that was a very popular book. But my most uh, important book is this one right here. Uh, forensically analyzing how to be saved and it examines every case that we have in the Bible as to how uh, men and women were saved and then we simply need to copy what they all did in order to be saved. So Don has a lot of interest in Bitcoin and we've had a lot of conversations about it. And uh, Don, what do you think the future of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies looks like? Yeah, I studied that quite a bit <clears throat> uh, with everything I could get my hands on. And it definitely is the wave of the future. If one considers it, uh, most everything that we do today anyway is through digital means we, you know, we very few of us carry a, a much cash around in our pockets. We always hand over a piece of plastic and instantly the money is taken out of our accounts. And, um, but it's, that's connected to what we call fiat. Fiat simply means that it is whatever the government claims that it is. And a dollar bill used to be exchangeable for uh, real gold or silver. And they took that away from us and obviously they confiscated our gold and silver in the process over a period of a number of years. So um, fiat currency has really met its end. Fewer and fewer people like it. Um, if you have ever seen the movie or heard this story, The Big Short, uh, that is proof as to the, the evil of paper fiat currency. Now uh, Bitcoin or or cryptocurrencies are nothing but fiat also but it's the same as having a bank in your own pocket or in your own brain and uh, you cannot be cheated 
by the banksters. So it's definitely the wave of the future. It's nearly instant. You can trade goods and services from one end of the globe to the next in a matter of a few minutes. And um, I think in 2018, which is this year, we're going to see trillions of dollars pouring into it because we have less and less confidence in our banks and um, it's a safer way to go. Is there any one cryptocurrency you'd recommend? There's a lot of them. Uh, you Right now you have to buy Bitcoin in order to get into any of the alternate crypto coins. But yes, there's a number of those. I think uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, is probably the most important. There's also Ethereum, Litecoin. Those are probably the top four. Um, but then there are some very important ones underneath that, maybe even down to the 200th level because the opportunity to even get rich, just like some people have gotten rich off of Bitcoin, still exists. But I think it probably only exists through this year. If you're going to really do something with crypto coins, you ought to do it this year. All right, Don, what would you say is one of your happiest memories? Hmm. I really don't know that I could pinpoint a single one except the one that at the moment I didn't realize how happy it was but as the years went by I realized that the moment that was the happiest of all was the day that I obeyed the gospel that I came into contact with the blood of Jesus Christ that washed away all my sins and set me free from the bondage of sin so that would certainly have to be my most memorable and joyous moment of my entire life. And the second one is like it because that would be when each of my kids or my friends and my family also obey the gospel. Don also has a lot of interest in politics and it's something we discuss a lot. Don, what would you say are your thoughts on the current administration? Well, <laughs> he is, Donald Trump is a man, uh, the President of the United States, that we love to hate, but he's very necessary. If we had not had Donald Trump, our Constitution would already uh, have been flushed by Hillary Clinton. Uh, she's completely lawless, and her husband. Donald Trump is immoral, loudmouth and few people really like him. They don't think that he's much of a statement, but he's getting the job done. And I did vote for him to do exactly what he's doing. <clears throat> I have stated before that I am a constitutional purist and a biblical purist. And those two points are very important in my life. Okay. So Don and I have shared several meals together, and uh, Don has shown that he's a really good cook. Don, what would you say are some of your cooking tips or tricks or your, like a favorite recipe of yours? It's, it's a recipe you've never actually gotten to eat. It's called Chicken Kiev, and it's made by breast of chicken, beaten very flat, uh, with the extra little tenderloin used to cover a frozen ball of garlic cayenne uh, gourmet butter in the center of it and all packaged together without uh, toothpicks or any other means of holding it together uh, floured and breaded egg and, and breaded and deep fat fried for a few minutes 350 degrees till it's golden brown and then um, serve it with some broccoli maybe and my super secret broccoli sauce um, and then uh, yeah we'll have to have that one of these days yeah. so what's like a, an interesting fact about yourself that you think I might not know yet uh, <laughs> you probably never knew that I was in the suture manufacturing business in Brazil uh, suture is for wound closure 
we would buy those needles uh, which are drilled end needles, little tiny needles that have a hole drilled in the end of them. And then we would put the string or the suture or the cat gut, which stands for uh, um, cattle gut, uh, which will dissolve in the body. Or we put uh, nylon or silk into the ends of those needles. Uh, we would package and sterilize them and sell them to the Brazilian market. Um, that business got stolen from me and my business partner. So you probably wouldn't know about that. You probably also wouldn't know about the um, nurses business that I was in in Cape Town, South Africa when I lived there and also in the Philippine Islands and in India where we would get not just nurses but doctors, uh, engineers, school teachers, and nurses to come and live in the United States uh, because of the great shortages of those people that we had here at that time. And then basically I have just preached the gospel all during those times and that's the thing that I love doing the most is to share that good news with everybody. Okay Don, that's about it. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us before we wrap this up? Yeah, Jesus is the way. He said so, and I've tested it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me, John 14, 6. And uh, that is true. I have studied um, all the religions of the world, um, or at least the, the most important ones. There's some minor religions that I've not studied, but I've studied many, many of those religions that are really nothing, too like the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which isn't Mormon, and some of the other offshoots. And um, I know that God's Word of the Bible is the way to determine the truth of all things. It can be weighed and measured to find truth in absolutely everything. And that's the most soul-satisfying uh, thing that I have ever known. And so naturally, I love to share it with anybody that has an ear to listen to it or the interest to consider it for themselves. All right, Don, thanks for talking to us today. Uh, sometimes me and Don disagree about religion and politics and different stuff like that. But Don's a really good roommate. He's uh, clean and honest and quiet. And, uh, you know, we get along for the most part. And um, it's been a good two years. So uh, thanks again, Don. And cheers.